Okay, good morning, everybody. I hope everybody's well. Happy Tuesday for those that are joining us live, for those that are joining us any time of the week. Thanks so much for tuning in. We have been delving into this space of honor. And the reason why this is so critical and, and what's so important, and I hope that you stick with me through the end of this. Whenever you talk about things that are not action-based, it, it's a little harder because things that are action-based, I could just put into my life today. Things that are sort of the being based, right? What I do, I could just do. And if I can figure out better ways to do something, then I'm, out, I'm off doing that. But once I start getting into the world of be, it becomes much harder to sit, to sit through it. But it's so critical that we vacillate between working on our doing and working on our being. Because I work on my doing too much. I may get caught in doing, 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 and never pulling back and seeing if the direction in which I'm heading is in the right way. What we've been talking about these past two days really is the work on the B. It's so much more subtle, but it is so much more impactful to know where to go when we are getting better and better and better at the who I am and who I want to be, because who I want to be also requires the work. And little kids want to be policemen and firemen and, and Indian chiefs, and, and that's all good, but all at the same time. Right? I wanted to be a professional basketball player when I was in high school. Like, I thought that was possible. Like That's what I wanted. And a lawyer at the same time. Like, the, the who I want to be shifts as one grows, as one matures. But at some point in life, life hits a certain rhythm. Your life from 5 to, to 10 to 15 to 20 to 25, these are massive changes. Grades, schools, opportunities, careers, life. And then all of a sudden, at some point in life, you hit a rhythm. And the rhythm doesn't force us to rethink our be. And so as we're in the best place in the world for rethinking the be, because we've gotten past the things that are forced on us. I was having a little, we're having a little bit of an issue, uh, issue, one of our children, whatever. School is different for each kid. Let's say it that way. Each kid, whatever. How much I could say. Not for you. I can tell you anything. It's just to maintain the integrity in the, of others. But so I was talking to somebody about school and, and they were reminding me that like, as much as everybody in school takes school very seriously, once you get out of school, like you're in a different world. You're in a different world. Schools forces thing on, forces things on people. You're forced to be with other kids your age. You don't even know or do know, or you're forced to be taking class. Like you're forced into different moves. Once you pop out into the other world, it's the whole world changes. And some of the hardest parts of who, what we do every day is being generated by who we are. And if we don't take the time in a, in a life where we're not being forced necessarily to do this or to that, if we don't take the time to question that and to elevate that, we may end up doing things that drive us towards a life that is good but not great. When we are exposed to things, that exposure makes us more familiar with something. So it creates the value in our minds for something that may not be valuable. We're just more exposed to it. So if I watch football, every week and then I see a football player in my life, I may give value to that football player at a much higher level than my wife who never probably ever watched a game. Maybe she tried during a Super Bowl 
and was like, this is ridiculous. I don't know what's going on. And why are they hitting each other for? She sees a full player and I'm like, holy cow, do you see that? I'm like, it's Patrick Mahomes. And she's like, is that is he a is he a basketball player? We're both looking at Patrick Mahomes, but because I am more and more familiar with him through a screen, I have increased the value of his worth in my eyes. It's not because he's more or less valuable. It's only because I'm more familiar with him. This happens when it comes to television a lot. When people see characters on television, they can't fathom them as non-characters. I took a course in college about this. I remember I took a course in, in the psychology of media. It was one of the most fascinating courses I think I've ever taken in my life. There's an entire study of the psychology of media and how people after watching back then, I mean, I'm, I'm dating myself a drop for those who are holding. So then we were studying like the Cosby show. Remember the Cosby show, Facts of Life, Growing Pains. You remember these shows for those who remember this? And people, they couldn't like, fa- they couldn't fathom that Bill Cosby was like a human being. Like he just lived with his fake fan. It's not that they couldn't understand it logically that like he's an actor. They just couldn't understand it emotionally. This happens sometimes with, when actors try to transition from television to, to film, they can't because people are like, what's Kramer, what's Kramer doing? And like, why would George Costanza be the head of the NSA? Like they don't understand. They don't get, that there's a guy named Jason Alexander who happens to play George. They don't understand it. It's because they're familiar with this character in his character setting and the value that who he is and what he stands for. It's not because it's not logical, it's because it's emotional. So critical to understand this, that what we let into our minds is influencing us in ways that we don't fully appreciate. And when we think about it logically, we're like, no, of course not, of course he's an actor. But when, we, when we're living it, when we see something or when we, when we act in certain ways, we are inclined towards something. We don't even realize what the culture around us is doing. We don't, I'm having this conversation now with two friends of mine. This whole world of masks and this virus world is incredible. I have two opposite friends. One is a professional who has excelled at everything in his life in the box. And I have another friend who has never followed a rule in his life. They're both very successful in their own worlds. And to them, the virus, they look at the world from two opposite angles. This guy, the, the, the entrepreneur, his heroes are people that, that went against the trends he tells the story of Elon Musk that, you know, everyone thought he could never build a rocket ship and he built SpaceX. And those are his heroes. And this other guy, his heroes are the people that are at the top of his pyramid that have just stuck their heads down and followed the rules and double checked precedent. When he hears like of multiple degrees to him, it's like the golden ring. He's a triple PhD with a master's in astrophenomic. Forget it. And this guy, he hears the word. He's like, what did he waste his time in school for? You understand? Are you following the characters? What they don't understand is their heroes are influencing them. Who they each respect and look up to and want to strive towards is influencing their behaviors today. And one person's like, you need a, a mask on a mask and don't ever go to a place indoors because you could. And one guy's like, are you out of your mind? This whole thing is just politics. And they're like, they're literally, and they're good friends. Listening to both of them chirping my ears is, is, is like, it's forget about it. It's like, who can ask for better anecdotal evidence on the differences in people? And they don't understand that they're both being influenced in some capacity with the people they look up to with the heroes, with who they honor. This guy honors my entrepreneur friend, everybody who bucks the trend. If you follow rules, you're a loser. 
And this guy honors those people who operate through a system and are able to take the previous work and science and, and take it to the next level. He honors those who are this, those who are successful in the trend. And they don't realize, I don't think enough, that he's just been getting hundreds his whole life. So everyone in every system has been patting on back and he hasn't been able to sit. And if he grew up now, they'd probably just drug him up. But back then they didn't have drugs for his age. And they're just both going at it. And they don't realize that what this really is, is not only, because we're not, nothing that we talk about is only. Everything is concentric circles on concentric circles. We just draw one little principle out just for a few minutes and look at it. They're both looking up at something that they honor. And those things that they honor, that they respect, that they look up to, is really inclining them to be like. I can feel it in myself sometimes, honestly. I tell this to you honestly. Because why not open myself up to my, my, my family here? I can feel myself when I'm in certain environments wanting more of what that environment has to offer. I can feel it. I can feel myself when I'm in boardrooms and corporations and around people that are, I can feel myself wanting to be much more successful in those areas. And I can feel myself when I'm sitting around scholars and, and, and holy people saying, why don't I study more? Why don't I, what, I can feel myself at this point, like inclined, what, what's going on? How come when I'm in one day, I'm traveling and sitting in a company and doing X, Y, and Z, my mind is thinking like, I should really do that. How come when I'm on another day, like especially if it's on a Shabbat and I'm listening to some rabbi speak and I'm so enamored by his wisdom, I'm thinking like, what am I doing? Why don't I take off another day a week and just study? And like, who am I? The answer is I'm both, but my brain is inclining towards the thing that I'm honoring at that moment. But remember that the greatness of your life is going to be on the things that you do in the hours and in the moments where you don't have to be doing anything else. People think that they're not great because I got to run carpool and I got to be a mom and a dad. That's not true. Everyone has to do that. Everyone has to do stuff like that. It's not that. Greatness is what you're doing in between. Greatness is who you are in the, in the moments of your day where you can push yourself in areas But where you push yourself naturally, where you're inclining towards without getting paid or without being guilted is really a product of what you honor, what you respect, what you strive to be like. And here's where it gets interesting because we strive to be like the greatest portion of ourselves, but if we don't expose ourselves to those things, we won't, our brain won't adapt around it. Of course, people strive to be great with their families, but if I've surrounded myself by people that are constantly striving for financial success, and I have no real heroes or no real moments where I'm in just exposing myself to people or ideas that allow me to remind myself and to see people that have achieved success in their family, then although I know it logically, I'm not going to ever do it. And in my moments where I am spending time with my family, what will be front and center in my mind are the images of those people that somehow managed to build this or build that or even to do for the world and to run here and to run there. And my importance is going to be tied up in the stories of people that have built this and have led this and have started this. And that's all good. But I won't have enough role models that I can turn to in my head. I won't have enough stories that I can read about. I won't have enough wisdom that, I can, that I've ever even thought about. I won't have the time where I've done enough of my own introspection to say that in the end of my life, my children, my family, my friends, if I get to the end of my life and have achieved all these things and my kids look and go, yeah, but he really wasn't there for us. I'm going to be blown out. If I'm going to be 90 years old on, on turning around to my life and look at my own children and be like, yeah, I know you built this business or I know you led this congregation or I know you led this community. And I know, I know I get it. But like, the truth is like, like they weren't here for us. 
I'm going to be blown out. But why am I not doing it now? The answer isn't because I don't know I have to do it. The answer is because the role models, the, the, the honoring, the creed, the list of priorities, it just didn't make it up there. It's not in my head. I don't honor it. I'm not blown by it. I haven't spent enough time thinking about it. Forget doing it. Forget do. We're not up. To, we're in the B. So I can come home every single day and look at my little kids and always be on my phone. You know how many empty nesters are out there that I've spoken to who regret the way they treated their kids growing up? So focused on their stuff so focused on their stuff that they forgot that those little kids will graduate their home and not come back. And then they graduate their home and they don't come back. Why would they come back? And then like, they got to like play politics with their kids to like get them to come over because when they had them, they didn't ever pay attention to them. And now that they lost them, they're going, Oh my gosh, I have no relationship with my children. And he's married to somebody else. And it gets really complicated when the person he's married to actually that person has a relationship with their family. Cause then the whole thing gets political. And what they're telling me is I, 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 I really should have spent the time when they were nine. They didn't know. They didn't know. They knew. That's what happened. Because when the kids are around, you're young or you're older. It doesn't matter. And the people that you honor and you respect that you want to get to already. I want to get there already. I want to, I want to be that leader already. I heard a story of a guy who was 40, or a story of a guy who was eight years old and he, he, he created 16 companies. It was on the cover of Forbes. Didn't you see it? Yeah. I want to get there already. So you skip steps. We stare at our phones instead of talking to our kids. You think I'm like perfect with this? I'm not. I'm constantly, my, my head is going out of my mind always, reminding myself of this 24 seven. I'm gonna get there already. I wanna be there already. People that I honor and that I respect. What are the things that are, am, I, am I enamored by? Who are the people that I look up to? This isn't even doing. I'm talking about being. Being. What do I want to be? Not today. What do, what do I want to be when I die? What do I want, want to be when they talk about me at my own funeral? Because that's coming. I hope not. Maybe the Messiah will come. I hope and pray beforehand and we will never have to experience it. But if everything stays normal, usually people die hopefully after 120 years. We got to think this way. Rav Noah Weinberg of blessed memory would always say, you can't live your life until you recognize that it's going to end at some point. We're not immortal. And we don't got to wait until most of our life has passed for us to look and go, oh my gosh, which is why you see some people that are like constantly accumulating. And then all of a sudden they get old and they give it all away. I'm like, why'd you give, what's going on? Cause you know what's going on? Cause they're seeing the end and going, oh shoot. All I do is accumulate. What's that going to do for me? No one really likes me. I don't really like myself. Where were I? Where was I my whole life? You know where I was? I was too busy looking at everybody around me who all they achieved was certain success. And I never really thought to myself, do I honor people that have achieved a higher level of being? Am I honoring people that exemplify kindness and generosity, spirituality? Do I honor people that have achieved wisdom? And, this, and the media will feed us the craziest stuff. We'll see images of people that like are fast talking, through phones, yelling at people, making deals, like as if like we strive to be that guy who steps on people, has to be in charge all the time. Needs people to always look at us. If we're not careful, they're gonna feed us stuff to buy. You scroll Instagram today, everyone on Instagram that you're scrolling looks amazing. Strive to be like the pictures that we see on social media, that's all fake. 
It's all fake. It's 30 pictures till you get one that's good. And then the one that's good, they Photoshop. If we don't, if we don't, if we're not aware of who we honor, tomorrow we'll talk about doing. We're not there yet. We're not there yet. We got to think about like, who do I honor? Not even a person. What are the values that I really honor? Not like the throw in values, you know? You go to school and they're like, you got an A in math? Oh, and you also are really good to kids. Nice. You got, you got a 99? Oh, and you're also very, you know, that kid needed help and you helped him out. It's all good. I honor intellect. Values. It's nice. It's cute. I throw that in. I throw that in for later. Like, it's nice that, you, that you're a nice person. That's nice. It's cute. I hope it works out for you. But can you imagine that you nailed, you memorized these many things? It's like unbelievable. And then you like, we buy it. But we got to really ask ourselves, what are the things that I honor the most? Who are the people that I honor the most? And even though we know it logically, now we've got to reach out and put it right in front of our faces. Because if we don't think about it and get it in our imagination, our brains won't create neuroplasticity that'll make it happen. I will talk about this right in 920. It's teeing me up a little bit. I'm sorry. I lost track of how fast we were going. All right, we'll talk about this. We'll talk about this because we're going to get this. And when we get this and it's clear to us, the rest of the stuff gets easy. Not easy. It doesn't get too easy, but once we get the right things that are in front of our eyes, we incline to doing it and it becomes a lot easier and better. All right, we'll continue. But think about this today. Just keep it in your mind today and just be aware of it. Just be aware of just how much these things really move us. All right. Thanks so much for being here today. Oh, really appreciate it. Have an incredible day with God's help. I can't wait to see you again tomorrow.